Country music takes a lot of heat for wanting to chase pop music, and to be honest, I get it. There are a lot of examples like, say, Taylor Swift of country stars making an intentional pivot into pop music. This is my very first documented official pop album. And stars that have never left country music but have had crossover hits, like maybe Carrie Underwood with The Four He Cheats, or Dolly Parton and Shania Twain, enjoy a level of success that few country artists could aspire to. The pop world is just a bigger pond filled with bigger fish. And if you're a country star that has this competitive mindset looking around at the engagement and fame and record sales of someone like Taylor Swift that's selling out stadiums and on every magazine cover and winning Grammys, yeah, you're gonna wanna do that too. But as acts like the band Perry have learned, it ain't that easy to break into pop music. Still, while we think a lot about stars like Maren Morris or Sam Hunt really pushing into the pop direction in their music, I actually think there are more examples of pop stars trying to go country. You know, I'm like this much in the country music world. For the most part, I think pop stars have a very temporary mindset when it comes to going country. They sort of treat it like dress up, the way a gaggle of LA fitness models would treat going to stagecoach. It's a detour and a good opportunity to get some photos of yourself in a cowboy hat so you can post captions on Instagram like, feeling ye hot today. And country stars invite you onto their tracks to add some publicity and crossover playlisting potential on streaming services. And that's why in the last few years, there's been country radio singles featuring Pink, Tori Kelly, BB Rexa, Julia Michaels, Demi Lovato, Charlie Puth, Justin Bieber, and Kelly Clarkson. And with the notable exception of Kelly Clarkson, none of those artists were really trying to get into country music. And this kind of country fishing, I feel like has become more and more normal and more and more predictable as a marketing move. It goes like this. Miley Cyrus starts appearing a lot more naturalistic all of a sudden in the imagery on her Instagram. And then comes a billboard cover where there's some insinuation that she might be embracing her Tennessee roots and country influences. And then the headlines start appearing. And then people are like, oh damn, is Miley Cyrus finally gonna follow up that Jolene cover and release a real country record? And then she drops Malibu and it has an acoustic guitar instead of just synths exclusively. And then the album is pretty much just a pop album. Or Justin Timberlake announces an album called Man in the Woods, and he's photographed in Montana wearing a big flannel, and people are like, oh snap, is he gonna follow up that Chris Stapleton performance at the CMAs and really release a country album? But then he releases this glitch pop song called Filthy, where he's Steve Jobs and there's some kind of sex robot video, and you're like, huh? And although the Chris Stapleton collab that did come off that album, Say Something, did end up becoming a hit, the narrative of this being a country record had long since been lost. Or maybe you're AJ McLean in the Backstreet Boys and your group has reunited and had a hit called God, Your Mama and Me with Florida Georgia Line on the country chart and you decide you need to disrupt country music. I am coming in, but I'm coming in to disrupt country. But then you release a song called Back Porch Bottle Service that's like a parody of a stereotype of bro country and the least disruptive thing ever. Tell me why. And as a YouTuber, here's the one I see the most, a pop star like Halsey will wear a cowboy hat or Lady Gaga will wear a cowboy hat and sing a little bit more acoustic of a song and then you get comments spammed by people being like, please review this, please review this, please review this, it sounds so country. And you're just kind of like, eh, maybe if you've only listened to pop music, it sounds country, but you're in for a rude awakening if you ever find out who like Gretchen Wilson is. But sometimes these attempts to cross over aren't so frivolous. They're not just high profile names flirting with the idea of country. It's pop stars truly going for it. The best example of that for me is Darius Rucker, who was already in one of the biggest acts of all time, Hootie and the Blowfish, and their album Cracked Rear View spawned massive hits and is one of the best selling albums of all time. And after a failed attempt at an R&B career, and all the things you're going through, I will bail away with you. Ended up becoming one of the biggest country stars of the last 20 years with massive hits like All Right and Wagon Wheel. So rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, and you might think, well, yeah, it was easy for him to cross over. He was already a huge star. But it's really not that easy for most acts that are coming out of the pop and rock scene. Country fans have a pretty good nose for authenticity and can feel when someone is just making a late in their career cash grab. I have heard it said before that when pop stars stop being relevant, they go to Nashville. And then when Nashville stars stop being relevant, they go to Branson. And for a lot of country fans, there might be a skeptical side eye given to an act that has stopped being relevant in his own genre, suddenly coming over to country music. 
Jessica Simpson is a pretty interesting example of this. At the beginning of the 2000s, she had gone from a pop starlet to a superstar thanks to the success of MTV's Newlyweds, and suddenly she had smash hits like With You. Now that I'm with you. But her musical sales power did not have much longevity. By 2006, she was putting out an album called A Public Affair, and the audience wasn't really buying that much of the music. But Jessica had had some country adjacent success a few years earlier with a song from the soundtrack of the movie Dukes of Hazard, which was a cover of These Boots Are Made for Walking. You keep which featured Jessica Simpson in a bikini top, dancing provocatively in Daisy Dukes. This ended up being a pretty big novelty hit for her and kind of suggested a movement into the country world. And so when her pop career was clearly waning, Jessica went into the country direction and released a song called Come On Over. I need you now. Jessica said she was crossing over because she had grown up around country music and wanted to give something back to the industry. At the time, the song got off to a super fast start on radio, actually breaking a record for radio ads that had been set by Miranda Lambert, but it didn't end up climbing the chart, nor did the follow-up single. Her country album called Do You Know saw mediocre sales. Jessica Simpson ended up parting ways with her label pretty quickly, and she might have released one other compilation album, but for the most part, she doesn't put out music anymore. Her shoes make a lot more money. Kelly Clarkson's probably the other best example of a real pop star wanting to go into the country music space. So obviously her biggest success in the country industry is gonna be her collaboration with Jason Aldean, Don't You Wanna Stay. But she has actually released two full singles to country radio, one called Tie It Up. And another one called Don't Rush, which is a collaboration with Vince Gill. She shared a manager with Blake Shelton for many years, and while she was married, she was technically like the daughter-in-law of Reba McIntyre. She performs all the time at big country award shows. She lives in Nashville. And yet somehow, this amazing vocalist, who's a great storyteller, hasn't put out a country album, and she's always stuck in like a million label disputes, but I hope one day this gal gets to put out the country album that she's wanted to make. And if she does never get to, then we can at least just be thankful that she provided us with one of the all-time greatest rants about the state of country music ever. Country music is gone. <laughs> like, I don't know who's making it, but there might be like four people. Cause now it's like weird rap, like weird word rap. And I'm like, I love that. Like when I started doing country, they were like, oh, you're pop. You can't, you're not country enough. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me show you this list of the top 20. But at least those projects didn't reek of desperation in a washed up kind of way, the way some do. Like maybe the aforementioned AJ McLean back porch bottle service debacle. I know the DJ and I bet you he'll play anything you want. Did it to me. Or my personal favorite, Uncle Ezra Ray's BYHB, Bring Your Hot Body. Uncle Ezra Ray was a quote, super group of sorts made up of the lead singer of Sugar Ray, Mark McGrath, a band member from Better Than Ezra, Kevin Griffin, and then Uncle Cracker, who decided to come together to contribute to country music, party jams like BYHB. If I tell you what it means, you'll roll your eyes. You have to hear it in context of the song. It's a brilliant, fun summer song. Just don't think about it, have fun. BYHB. Because something happens in the mind of some songwriters when they realize that Bacardi rhymes with party and they're just like, I, I need to make that song. The, the industry needs this. They need this from me. And it's like, guys, that's why we have Florida Georgia Line. Girl, you know you're the life of my party. You can stay and keep sipping Bacardi. There's kind of a subcategory of pop stars that are like these pop, folk, rock, chanteuse types that I think have their own little niche of trying to cross over into country music. Michelle Branch did it most successfully. She was already really successful with mainstream hits like Everywhere and All You Wanted and was kind of this coffee shop pop rock star. But then she linked up with Jessica Harp and they started this duo, The Wreckers, that had extravagant success right out of the gate, thanks mostly to their big hit, Leave the Pieces. And it's all right, yeah, I'll be fine, don't worry. And from 2005 to 2007, these gals were killing the game. They had another hit, actually, 
called My Oh My. Their album called Stand Still, Look Pretty, which first off is a complete jam of an album, was also a great seller. Still, it was the only one the Wreckers ever made, and they broke up a few years later, leaving people kind of scratching their heads. But I will say this, their Instagram was recently relaunched, and they said there is new music coming soon. So 15 years later, we might get the Wreckers follow-up we all want. Around the same time period, Jewel tried to make the transition into country. She had spent a decade in the pop world as this kind of enigmatic singer-songwriter who once been homeless and then turned into this pop star, writing on albums like Pieces of You just connected with people and she blew up. And although she put out singles like Stronger Woman, she never really connected in as big of a way in the country world. The same could be said of Sheryl Crow, who officially stopped pursuing pop music success and went into the country market with her album Feels Like Home. It was actually Brad Paisley that convinced his friend Sheryl to make the switch, arguing that her music actually kind of already fit in better in the country format than the pop format at that point. And I totally agree with him. I think for artists like Michelle Branch and Jewel and Sheryl Crow that already had such an instrumental sound and a kind of tendency more toward folk, I would want to get out of pop music too. Because if the 90s really embraced kind of alternative music, the mainstream was shifting much more in the direction of EDM and hip hop at that time, whereas country was kind of inheriting these soft pop rock sounds that used to be more mainstream. Like you could have never released If It Makes You Happy as a single to pop radio in the 2010s and had it compete with Kesha and LMFAO. You just couldn't. So for some people like them, they didn't really change that much of their sound as much as the market they were trying to reach with it. Now, I actually think Sheryl Crow's album Feels Like Home is awesome. I feel like Sheryl Crow deserves justice as this was a good country attempt and we should have embraced her. But again, she never reached her former heights of success. She's actually said she's done putting out LPs for her career. She might just put out music more sporadically. Strangely, the most success she had in country was when she wasn't really going after it. It was her duet with Kid Rock, Picture, which became a crossover format hit. I was headed to church. I was off to drink you away. And Kid Rock is another one of these examples of a guy who has a lot of fans in the country music space and in the rock space and a little bit in the pop and metal space. He's always been a little bit genre agnostic. And although All Summer Long did become a big hit, he has not really colored in the lines enough to pursue a mainstream country music career. And he's actually a good segue into some of the rockers that have tried to transition into country. John Bon Jovi has flirted with country music for a long time, all the way back to Wanted, Dead or Alive. I'm a cowboy, I'm a steel. But he has been incorporating country elements onto his albums and then has released a few songs that really don't feel like rockers as much as like Hallmark or Today Show anthems like Who Says You Can't Go Home with Jennifer Nettles. Who says you can't go Steven Tyler, the lead singer of Aerosmith, actually released a full-on country album with Big Machine, and he released this country rock song called Red, White, and You as a single. All I need is red, white, and you. Plus another single called Love Is Your Name that featured a video that, I don't know, it looked like your crazy aunt in a wind machine. It's just lots of scarves. The album got mixed critical reviews, it was kind of seen as a cash grab, and his country career did not take off. Aaron Lewis, the lead singer of Stained, has probably most successfully made this transition, but he really hasn't done it in the mainstream. He's definitely framed himself as an outlaw, and he's done so very well. He actually has a song called Country Boy that features George Jones and Charlie Daniels, and people really love Aaron. He's got a big fan base that likes his country music, and I think even if people were skeptical when he first crossed over of, is this sincere? He hasn't done what so many other stars do, which is make one album and then quit country music when it doesn't sell. He has stuck with it for over a decade and shown, yeah, this is really the music I wanna be making. There's some other people that don't fit so neatly into any one category. There was Laura Bell Bundy, who was a Broadway actress that was gonna bring dance country with songs like Two Step into the mix. She's released a couple country albums, but whether it's because she wasn't fitting people's expectation of her or whether it was just because people didn't care for them, 
they didn't do that well. Julianne Hough from Dancing with the Stars certainly wasn't a pop star, but she kind of felt like one when she released her country album. She actually saw a good amount of success with her single, I've had that song in my head all day. She released an album and then she just kind of quit, which is again why country fans might feel a little bit skeptical towards some of these attempts. Like people say, I'm really here, I really want to do this, this really is my dream. You throw them a bone, they have success, and then they're like, mm, I actually really prefer being a big star out in LA. And for the record, I don't think there's anything wrong with people out in LA wanting to go explore the country music world for a little bit. Like, I wanna hear Miley Cyrus go fully country one day. I'd love to hear Justin Timberlake really make a Memphis-themed album and think about his hometown and get all those musicians in there with him. Nelly has always embraced country influence in his rap, and I'm excited to hear this project that he's had percolating for years. All I really want is for there to be substance in the music. Because I think a lot of pop stars are drawn to country music for its storytelling, for its seriousness, and then they kind of treat it as a gimmick. They don't really embrace the storytelling aspect of the music. They just kind of make something stupid, but this time wearing chaps. Like that Diplo album, Snake Oil. I think that's kind of cool. Oh, this big EDM producer is going to come work with country stars, but then we get do -si do out of it. Favorite part of a honky tonk, them daisy dupes and ba donk ba donks. I don't know, but I'm not inherently against it is all I'm saying. And I'd actually love to know what you guys think about pop stars trying to go country. It's pretty interesting how hard it is for people to become the rare exception like Darius Rucker or like the Wreckers that really manage to do it. And that's really interesting to me and I hope it's interesting to you. And if you like this video, give it a like or share it. Subscribe to the channel if you've never been here before. Check out all my links, my playlist, my Patreon, all that stuff is in the description down below. And I will see you guys very soon with a lot more country content. Thanks, bye. Thank you.